Long before the sages battled in the arena, Aldir, the High Sage, would teach his students how to master the elements. Now, their students can not attack on every single day, and because of that, he developed this game in order to teach them the basic aspects of how the elements function. And in the game Aldir, the High Sage, you're going to be placing down elements on top of other elements to guarantee patterns. From there, you'll place your students down, as well as the High Sage, and if you can place all your students down before any of the other players, you'll win the game. It plays two to four players, it takes about a half an hour, and it's for ages 12 and up. Ready to check out the game? Let's go ahead and take a look down below. This is Aldir the High Sage, and it's set up for four players currently, but you can play two or three if you'd like. The first thing you'll do is you'll give every single player who wants to play four student pawns and a player board. You'll place each of these student pawns onto one of the four elements, whether it be earth, air, water, or fire, as well as setting the main board in the middle here and Aldir the High Sage, just set him aside somewhere. Every player will then also shuffle the deck and take five cards from it, and these cards will have two elements on them, or they'll have two unique things, which is going to be either A, a wild, or a blank space. Those can be placed on any element of your choosing. Go ahead and shuffle this deck as well, make sure that it has got four cards out here into the shop, and then begin with the player who most recently transformed the elements, or maybe just the youngest player. Starting by looking at your hand of cards, you're going to determine what you want to do by playing these cards down onto the elements here in the middle. Now this game is going to be an expanding game, so as you place cards down, the board will expand and you're trying to gather patterns. The patterns are located on your player board and every single player has the same type of patterns. If you can master the element by successfully making the pattern, you'll place your student on that element in any of the spaces provided. And to start off, we'll show you how placement works. Firstly, you can place any wild, which is this guy here, on any of the elements that you would like. And you can place it like this, or like this, or like this, as long as it's fully covering one. The next thing you can do is place an element that matches its element. So, for instance, earth on earth. And then the last type of placement you can do is simply conquering an element, which means that you're going to look at your board here, and you're going to determine the element you want to place, and see what that element is mastery over. So, in, for instance, earth beats water, which means you can place an earth element on top of a water element. And you'll want to do that because you're trying to make combinations of these specific type of... Uh, of element shapes. So I can place that like that. I can do two placements per turn. The next one I can do is this, simply this one right here. So I'll go ahead and place this here. I can cover any wild, and wilds will also count as the element of its choice. The only difference is on a blank one here, which also functions like a wild, it does not count as an element, but it can be played like one. So for my second placement, I'll go ahead and do that. After I've placed two element cards, I'll then place one or more of my sage figures, if possible, onto the board. Now I can. Luckily, I have made the two by two earth element square, so I can take this student and place it on any of these four areas here. And I'll go ahead and place it just like that. The reason why you do that is because when you place your student down or Aldir the High Sage, it will prevent players from utilizing that space in con combination with one of their elements that they need to master. So for instance, this player can't simply place here and gain control of these four because only these three are now active. This basic square is now gone for the rest of the game and it cannot be removed and nobody can place anything on top of this guy here. The next thing I'm going to do is move Aldir the High Sage and he can move onto any space he wants as well. Uh, excluding, I believe, the wild and the uh, blank spaces, you can go ahead and place them down. I'll go ahead and place them on that fireplace right there. Afterwards, you'll simply draw two elements from this pool here, not from the top of the deck, and select them into your hand. So I've got some water, I've got a wild, a blank, and then I've got this fire one. Maybe I want to try and make the fire one next, so I'll go ahead and take these two here. After that, your turn is done, refresh the shop, and the next player will then get to go, continuing by looking at their hand, placing their elements, placing any of their possible students, followed by placing the Aldir into any other space that you know, obviously doesn't have one uh, student already there, as well as then drawing two element cards from the shop once again. Once a player is able to establish control of all the elements by placing all of their students on the patterns provided on the sheet onto the actual board itself, then that player will win the game and successfully become the new sage or master of the elements in the game, Aldir the High Sage. That's pretty much how to play the game. It's fairly simple and pretty straightforward. Let's come up and discuss it.
This is a card placement game or tile placement game, depending on how you want to look at it. Your objective obviously is to create patterns utilizing elemental cards, placing them down on the board and satisfying the victory condition, which is to place all of your students down. Remember, of course, that when students or Aldir itself are on the board, those spaces can't be utilized for anybody else's combinations, but the rest of the open spaces can be. So as the board fills out, players are going to help you or hinder you based on how they place the cards, and then of course hinder you based on how they place the students, as well as Aldir. Aldir can't stay and must be moved, and obviously they cannot be played on either Void, which are the blanks, or the simple wild spaces themselves. Wilds can always be used used as elements in any pattern, but you can't place your students on them, and voids cannot be, but they function just like the wild spaces. And that's basically the idea of the game, and I think you understand it, and if you don't, let me know and I'll let you know in the comments how to explain it better. Regardless though, let's talk about the game itself. This is an abstract game, but it has some elements of other different type of game mechanics. The placement and control, you do feel like you're trying to master each certain element, and of course, the ability to place certain elements over others is a nice little treat. Not just from the void and wild, but also the fact that water is always going to beat the air, air, oh sorry, fire is going to beat the air, air will beat earth, and earth is going to beat water. That is a rule that will last throughout the entire game, and it's going to help you in placement and determine how you want to place certain things. Players can stop you from gaining certain easier to reach combinations on the board, but if you're lucky enough to have the right cards in hand and pick them up at the appropriate time, as well as have the ingenuity to place them correctly, you can pull out some secret little tactical combinations and thus score you the victory. Obviously in this game, as you play, you're going to progress and get a lot better. So the first game you're going to be less good and the 10th game you're going to be fairly good. And the 100th game you're probably going to master it and start beating the people that are brand new, which is nice to feel like you can progress in the game and learn. And it's not just fully chance. The only chance that comes into the game is going to be how people place the cards onto the board and where they place the students, which is basically their strategy. And the full 100% chance comes from the deck of cards after shuffling it, what is in the shop, but even still, the variability of the different types of cards and how you can choose them and select them will help you satisfy your victory conditions of placing all your students down. The game is quick, it's fun, it's easy to learn, it's easy to teach, and best of all, the game comes with a lot of replayability because the board is going to be ever-changing every game, and depending on the type of players that play, will determine how the board state goes. Overall, really, really fun game. Rather Dashing Games did a great job with this one. In fact, this is probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite Rather Dashing game I have played to date. And I strongly suggest you take a look at the game if you're interested. The quality of the components, the artwork, all of it is very, very nice. I enjoy it, it feels great, and it works exactly as intended. It feels exactly as intended as well. Regardless though, what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments section below. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I look forward to mastering the elements with you next time. Peppy!